Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to do a video. Some people ask me <clears throat> why I have a problem with cops and that what and whatnot, but it's a lot of bad experiences over the years have uh, caused a lot of it. And I wanted to tell you a story about one time. Actually, a lot of times I had issues with this place here. I'm sure you can see it. Um, these people are... are I don't I don't really know what they are. I'm just going to assume they're a cult. There's no windows on the building. It's weird. You know, there's a gate around the parking lot. It's just a weird place. It's a it's a church, but they're not very nice people. They're actually pretty horrible people if you ask me. Um years ago I used to park over here. I used to park Bobtail right about this spot right here. And that's because I was using the storage unit right here for a lot of my stuff. I didn't, I didn't have a you know a home, a regular home at the time because I was working all the time and just I was home for like I think what 48 hours on the weekends or whatever. So I just park here, you know, I kept my motorcycle in one of the storage units and you know just bob you know park my bobtail here, and uh, I won't hide it. I used to work for Covenant uh, Transport at the time, and that's part of the problem here. Um, so what would happen is that these people would call the police on me constantly, like every single day that I was home, would call the police on me. They'd come out, and then they'd go away. They ID'd me several times. This is before I, you know, really got to the point where I was just not, you know, I'm not going to cooperate with the cops. But, you know, they ID'd me several times. One time they even, you know, broke into my truck. Um, I used to leave it running because it had kind of bad batteries. And then when it was hot outside, you know, I had my dog in the truck, and, and so I didn't want him to get... Uh, you know have issues and whatnot so i would leave it running and like i said i would use the storage unit here for uh you know to keep my stuff in well they you know they called the cops on me all the time which it's against the law to report false crimes we know that and they're abusing 911 well i didn't have a lot of evidence at the time but what they ended up doing was uh now i want to show you this they, they you know they got a gate around their parking lot and there's really no reason you know there's curb stops here and this it was the same way when i when i was staying there it's been several years but it was the same exact setup you know they've always had and um they wrote a letter to covenant transport now covenant transport claims to be a christian company you know they're not if you ask me but either way they told Covenant Transport that I would ride my motorcycle through their parking lot. There's no, you know, there's no back entrance in the parking lot. I'll show you that here. So, you know, that's that would be that would go into their parking lot there, but it, there's really no way to get in there. And you saw the other gate. But they would tell, you know, that, you know, that I would ride my motorcycle through their parking lot and rev my engine during church services, and that they also found beer cans and beer bottles and whatnot in this you know, in this dumpster and they blamed it on me well i don't drink okay so that's just number one you know just flat out falsehood you know they had no reason to say that but they know that i'm sure they did some research and they figured out that covenant transport claims to be a christian company and they have a zero tolerance policy for alcohol so i get word from the company saying that you know i gotta move i can't ever be here ever again or i'm gonna get fired I never had a problem with the company, never had an accident, never had a DOT problem, never had a service failure. My, you know, my, my record with the company was perfect. There was no reason for them to treat me like that, but they did any fucking way because they just felt like it, apparently. I mean, they, they wanted to believe that this place was a church. I don't believe it's a church. I believe it's a cult. But either way, you know, because Christians don't do that to people. You know, you, you, you're supposed to be tolerant of people and whatnot. And I wasn't bothering them one bit. And, uh, so anyway, they, you know, they wrote this letter, the company, you know, leaned on me, told me I can't be there no more. So I'm like, all right, fine. I went and got an apartment not too far away. And, you know, subsequently, I mean, you know, in, in a weird sort of way, these people were responsible for me to get burglarized. So whatever. Anyway, um, so the last day that I was there before I left, I called the police on them because they have been using 911 to harass me they've been following false police reports on me they've been lying and it's just you know it's just wrong it's it's harassment it's you know it's abuse of 911 it's you know it's a crime 
So the cops come out there. You know, they park along here. They go inside and they talk to those people after they talk to me. After I told them what was going on, they go inside and they talk to them. Cop comes out and, you know, and, and tells me that there's nothing they can do about it and that I'm the one in the wrong because they could write me, they could write me a violation for leaving a vehicle running while unattended. And it's like, these people have legitimately committed crimes by, you know, abusing 911, and yet it's okay for them to do that, but it's not okay for me because, you know, maybe it's because I'm a dirty truck driver, maybe it's because they just don't like me. I don't know what the reasoning was, but, you know, that's not the first time that I've ever been threatened in such a manner to where it's like, you know, we don't want to do anything for you, so we're going to threaten you. Um, when I was a teenager, I worked in uh, at a Waffle House in Georgia, and it was New Year's Eve, and uh, we were really busy. The, um, you know, this one woman kept sending scrambled eggs with cheese back over and over and over and over and over. You know, I was cooking, and, uh, you know, I don't know if you, you know, people realize that Waffle House gets extremely busy on, on New Year's Eve. So I kept sending them out, and she kept sending them back. You know, I, you know it happened like five or six times at least. So, you know, me being 19 years old, being kind of crude and whatnot, I, I, I looked at the waitress and said, tell that bitch to suck my dick. Apparently, she went and said that. I don't know, because you know, there's no way that woman could have heard me. It was loud in there. It was, you know, packed full of people. There's no way she could have heard me. About five minutes later, maybe, this woman gets up, grabs a sugar shaker, and throws it at me, and starts cussing me out and whatnot. Um... I just stayed in the back, you know, I had my, you know, the other cook, Mark, kind of held me back a little bit. He's like, don't, don't do anything, because I was, I was getting really pissed off. And, uh, so I just stayed in the back. She calls the cops. Cops come out there. She's stupid enough to tell the cops that she was aiming for my head when she threw the sugar shaker at me, which is an assault. She didn't batter me because she didn't hit it, but it, well, it is an assault, and it is a crime. Cop tells me that... If I press charges on her for assault, that he's going to press charges on me for cussing in front of women and children. You know, that, that, that sounded ridiculous to me at the time and whatnot, but it was literally the law in the books, even though, you know, today I'm a little bit more savvy. I should have told him to go to hell, you know, go ahead and do it. Try it because it's a First Amendment thing. But either way, you know, I didn't, you know, and that's, you know, like I said, I'm a victim I don't call the cops on people unless it's a real serious thing. And I didn't call the cops at the Waffle House that time. She did. But, you know, I don't I don't bother the cops. I don't want to get the cops involved with stuff because, it's, you know, most things can be handled on their own. Um, I think I've, I've called the cops twice, I think, in my lifetime. This time and when I got burglarized, you know, over at that apartment complex. But anyway... Um, you know, every dealing that I've had with the police like, like this, it's like, you know, they don't want to do anything for me. They just want to threaten me. They want to threaten they, they want to threaten me either, either because they don't want to do their job or because they just, you know, they just don't like me. I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but, you know, I don't bother people. I don't, I don't mess with people. I don't give people shit or hard time or anything like that. And these people especially are just pure evil, if you ask me, because... You know, not once did they ever come out and ask me to go to church with them or anything like that. And they never, they never reached out to me. They never talked to me personally. They just kept calling the police over and over and over. And then sending a letter to my company, which, that's just, I mean, you're messing with my, my livelihood at that point. And you're lying about it. I can't, how am I supposed to ride my par my motorcycle through your parking lot? How, how's that going to happen? There's not, lo not a lot of space here. And, when, and during church services, they pack it out. I mean, it's, it's pretty busy church i guess and this entire street they used they didn't used to have so many cars from the body shop on the street they used to be kind of up there for, for the most part but all the all the people that went to church there would just line the streets and whatnot and that may have been what was upsetting them was that i was taking up some of their parking but it's a public parking place i mean it was it has you know it's it's a public street and i can park there it's not it's not against the law but you know that's that's what i'm saying like the cops never did me any favors in that respect. They just flat out refused to do anything. And, you know, the harassment's kind of sketchy. It may, it may, be, a, may be a civil thing or whatever, but abusing 911 is definitely a criminal thing. 
And I, I guarantee you, the lady that was in there probably admitted that she kept calling 911 on me, but she, you know, they won't do nothing. They'd rather hurt, you know, they'd rather threaten me and threaten to, and threaten to take action against me because, you know, these people want to harm me. So that's just a little short story on why it is that I'm, you know, a lot, you know, I have a problem with cops. There's more than that. I mean, I've have had is, other issues and whatnot, and I might tell those stories too. But that's just the way, it, you know, that's just one of the many reasons why I have issues with cops. I don't think, you know, they, they don't seem to do a lot of, you know, do a lot of real work. And, and then they, you know, they sweep things that are tough under the rug. And then they, oh, you know, they have a you know habit of just wanting to get in your pocket and take things from you. And not actually do any, you know, real criminal uh, interdiction or anything like that. So... I'll leave it at that, and I'll probably make another video soon, you know, maybe another story or whatever. Have a good day.